So baseball season has begun, and fans of every team love opening day, when hope springs eternal. Even for fans of the weaker teams, it takes a while for the bad news to set in that this isn't going to be your year. But for the Jewish people, on our opening day, the bad news came early. We're told in this week's Torah portion about the Shemini, the eighth day of the inauguration of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. When a heavenly fire came down from God and accepted our offering, inaugurating the temple to the delight of the entire Jewish people. But then moments later, tragedy struck. Two of the saintly sons of Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, went and brought an additional offering that they weren't commanded to bring. And that same fire came down from heaven and incinerated them. Now we know they meant well. They were trying to live up to their names. Nadav comes from a root word meaning to donate. Avi, who means he is my father, referring to God. They were trying to donate to their father in heaven. They meant well, but they brought the wrong sacrifice at the wrong time, and they paid the ultimate price. In a successful effort to console his older brother, Moses explained to Aaron that God had told him that God is sanctified through those to whom he is closest. Moses was telling Aaron that we have a principle, that God judges the righteous to a hair's breadth. The more righteous the person, the closer the scrutiny. So Nadav and Avi, who had died because of their greatness. We're not used to that in our Western democracies and our systems of justice. We're used to hearing opposite stories about how people had leniency in prosecution or punishment because they're able to score touchdowns or baskets or goals or because their last name is the same as that of a famous politician or because of their or their family's wealth. We even have phrases for this. We call it protectia or we say it's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, God says to us instead, it's not who you know, it's who you are. And the greater you are, the closer God pays attention and the more exacting his judgment. Now, I know you'll say to me, Harry, if that's the case, leave me alone. Let me sit on the sea of spiritual life and coast along on my raft of mediocrity and tell God, thank you very much, he can hold on to his lightning bolts. And to that, I'll remind you that the same God who punishes the righteous promises them and us that when he rewards, he does so a thousandfold. Now, if I told you I had a deal that had the risk of loss of the entire principle, but had an equal chance of taking your initial investment and multiplying it by a thousand, you'd want to hear those details but there's more. If you choose that mediocrity and give up that possibility of coming closer to God, you're giving up the objectivity that comes from spending time studying his sacred texts. And you're giving up the equilibrium from knowing that good or bad, they'll both pass and they both came from heaven. And you'll give up that deep-seated happiness that can only come from a life well and properly lived. All of us, young, middle-aged, old, every day, we face that same issue when we hear the beckoning of those twin sirens of temptation and laziness. It's easy to hit snooze on the spiritual alarm clock and perhaps thereby escape that greater scrutiny that's accorded to the righteous. But if we do that, we also miss out on the extraordinary benefits.